Yeah, uh, hello everyone. My name is Andreas Ortei. I'm a researcher at the Max Planck Institute for Intelligent Systems in Germany. And I'm also a member of the Learning and Intelligent Systems Group at the Technical University of Berlin. And my talk will be about multi-level motion planning, which is basically the idea of planning motions over uh, multiple levels of abstractions of the state space. And the agenda for today is really that I want to talk about three topics on the multi-level motion planning. The first topic is the bird's eye view, uh, how multi-level motion planning actually relates to um, concepts like constraint relaxation, admissible heuristics, Kruzian spaces, and projections. Um, afterwards, I will talk about fiber bundles, which for me is really the language uh, for multi-level abstractions, which allows us to actually develop efficient algorithms. And finally, I want to talk about how we can efficiently plan over fiber bundles by generalizing uh, motion planning algorithms like RT star, PRM star, or sparse. So let me start with uh, motivation. Um, as we all know, realistic planning problems often are high dimensional. They might have narrow passages and therefore they require a long computation time. And one of the ways of how to handle this complexity seem to be abstract representations. They seem to be really the key um, to also significantly reduce planning time. And this goes back all the way to the beginning of, of the whole field of AI. Uh, for example, the seminal work by Herbert Simon about hierarchical systems, which was published in 1968. And therefore it makes a lot of sense to really study abstract representations in more detail. And this is what we will do in this talk. And the framework in which we'll do that um, is something which we call multi-level motion planning. Um, this is the idea of planning by imposing multiple levels of abstractions onto the state space. And as you might have guessed, this requires two things. First, we need to choose or to learn an abstraction, and then we need efficient algorithms which can exploit those abstractions. And in this talk, we will talk um, exclusively about the algorithms to exploit a given set of abstractions. And if you want to actually choose or learn abstractions, um, there are also like a lot of good works out there, for example, Konidaris and Brandao, who published uh, extensively on this topic. After the small uh, motivation, let us come now to the first big topic of this um, talk, namely the rated work or the bird's eye view on multi-level planning. Uh, I want to discuss a little bit how does actually multi-level abstractions differ from existing optimization methods like constant relaxations, uh, also planning over lower dimensional spaces, planning with projections, or planning with admissible heuristics. And my answer today is really that they all highlight different aspects of an underlying principle. And the way I have, uh, how I actually view this whole uh, landscape of different methods uh, is best illustrated by this picture here. Uh, you might have already heard the story about the blind people and the elephant, where a group of blind people wants to know how an elephant looks like. They all go to the elephant, everyone uh, inspects a different part of the animal, and they all come to different conclusions about how the uh, animal actually looks like. And I feel the same about um, many of the papers which I have read uh, on abstract representations in motion planning. Um, there are a lot of people who say it's constant relaxations. People say it's projections. Um, there are other paper who say it's in Latin space or it's in miscible heuristic. Uh, we also use the terminologies of quotes in spaces and simplifications. And uh, the point which I really want to stress here is that they all highlight different aspects of the same underlying principle. And uh, what is also important to note that there is not one common framework which is actually putting them all together. And now I want to go a little bit more in detail um, about some of those topics. First of all, um, constant relaxations. Um, this is really um, a very simple idea, namely that you, instead of solving the whole motion planning problem, for example, you solve a simplified problem, and then you use that solution uh, to find a solution to the original problem. And you can do that in many ways. For example, you can shrink the robot um, geometry. You can increase your free space or you can shrink the obstacle geometry. And there are also um, frameworks which can actually um, 
apply that, but on multiple levels of uh, relaxations. For example, the framework of progressive relaxations or iterative constraint relaxations. And more modern uh, approaches often talk about um, lower dimensional spaces or base spaces, um, which is the idea that instead of planning on your original state space, you first of uh, first go to a lower dimensional space, you solve the problem there, and then you go back to the original space to solve the problem. Um, and, and there are also different terminologies here, for example, Latin spaces, quotient spaces, Euclidean subspaces, uh, also multi-layer approaches. And if you think more deeply about it, you also realize that this is very closely related to prioritization and abstraction for multi-robot planning. Um, and there are some excellent papers on multi-robot planning out there, for example, by Solovey, Schoem, or Wagner. And uh, a third topic are uh, projections of your state space. So instead of planning on your original state space, you use actually projections um, to simplify planning. You can do that also in different ways. Um, for example, you can project to your workspace, for example, to your end effector position, you can also learn projections and there are also frameworks for uh, adapting uh, the dimensionality of your projection on the fly. And the final topic here are admissible heuristics. Um, and if you have read the uh, book by Judy Pearl, uh, Heuristics uh, from 1984, um, you will know that heuristics are actually um, yeah, methods by consulting simplified models of the problem domain, which really also sounds very similar to base approaches or uh, projections. Um, there are also a lot of different um, papers out there who apply, who apply admissible heuristics to continuous spaces. For example, an A star-like search in continuous domains, um, also lower bounds uh, for, for, for example, for sampling-based planning, we have also lower dimensional sampling, of course, and we have also guide paths, which have been extensively used in contact planning, for example, in the papers by Tonneau, Gray, or Sang. And from my point of view, what ties them all together are admissible heuristics, which are just lower bounds on the desired solution. And if you think more deeply about it, then uh, admissibility comes really from um, explicitly defining necessary conditions um, for your problem. And if you think about it in that way, then constraint relaxations really produce admissible heuristics and solutions on lower dimensional spaces or which come from projections um, can be used as necessary conditions to solve your original problem. Uh, of course, only under the condition that the projection preserves actually your solutions. And more formal results can be found in uh, one of our papers, which we uh, published at ISRR in 2019. And you might think that this is great news that you can just use this framework of admissible heuristics to uh, develop very efficient algorithms. But the problem is that if you dive into the details, if you want to implement something, there's little shared vocabulary, which actually prevents you from developing very efficient algorithms. For example, there are no um, words for a region of points which project onto a lower dimensional space or the set of paths which project onto the same lower dimensional path. And therefore, it is really necessary that we have a new framework which actually has this vocabulary. And I think one of the best candidates we have so far is the framework of fiber bundles. So let me give you a small introduction to fiber bundles. Um, so fiber bundles basically were first invented um, back in 1958 at least. Um, there is a book uh, called The Topology of Fiber Bundles by Steenrod, which first mentions them. Um, the definition of a fiber bundle is just that they are a tuple of four elements, x, b, f, and pi, whereby x is the total space, b is the base space, f is a fiber space and we have a projection from the total space uh, to your base or your lower dimensional space. And you can really think of um, the fiber space as the null space of your projection, for example. And below here you see three different examples of fiber bundles. 
Uh, on the left, you have a graphical depiction of a fiber bundle as a union of fibers, um, where we have um, the base manifold below here, or the base space. And the base space, basically every point on the space space belongs to one of those fibers. And the fibers together basically make up the union of the space. Um, then we have here in the middle an example, which I will use throughout this talk, namely the torus. Um, you can actually abstract the torus by projecting it onto a circle, which we have done here. And for each point of the circle, we have actually um, another circle on the torus, which is this white ring here. And all the points on this white ring here, they project down onto the same green point. And the point is now that uh, the torus can be seen as a union of fibers, whereby the projection basically abstracts away each fiber to one of the points on your base space. And the same is uh, depicted here on the right, where the fibers are straight lines in a cylinder, where the fiber space are the straight lines, the total space is a cylinder, and your base space is um, the small disk below here with a projection from total space to base space. And uh, formally, um, Fiber bundles really formalize um, the terminology of a local product space, meaning that um, a fiber bundle locally looks like the Cartesian product between the base space and the fiber space, but it might have a different global structure. And uh, the best way to actually think about um, the fiber bundle is that the state space, your, your total space X, is basically a union of fibers, and this union of fibers is parameterized uh, using your base space B. And the main point for motion planning is really that if the projection uh, is admissible, meaning that it does not uh, throw away feasible solutions, then the base space B is a constrained relaxation and solutions on your base space can actually be used as admissible heuristics. Uh, more information you can find in our paper at ISRR. And now I want to show you two cases of how we can actually exploit fiber bundles. First, restriction sampling, and second, computing path sections. Um, both of those methods require um, the use of restrictions and sections, uh, which I will just explain briefly. So let me start with restrictions. So a restriction is basically, um, if you have a subset of your base space, let's call it U, um, then we call the um, inverse projection of U into the total space restriction which is basically all the points on your total space which project onto the um, subset of the base space. And in the middle here, you can see uh, three different restrictions. On the left, you have uh, U being just a point, and then the restriction is just a fiber, basically just this white circle around the torus. Uh, in the middle, you see if uh, U is actually a path, then um, the set of all those points in white here um, is called the path restriction. And then finally, we have a graph restriction, which is basically the set of all those points on your total space, which project onto a given graph on your base space. And using the concept of a restriction, we can do uh, now something which we call restriction sampling, which is the idea um, of instead of sampling uniformly on your total space, on your state space, you instead first sample a point on the graph on your base space. You then sample another point on your fiber space. You put them together and you get um, another point which is restricted uniformly to the graph restriction. And the main idea here is of course that we already prune a lot of points away in this way, namely all of those which are actually infeasible on your base space and which are not inside of the graph. And you can implement this um, graph sampling here, for example, in different ways by, for example, only sampling the vertices, only sampling the edges. Um, and there are different ways of how you can do that actually efficiently. And the second topic are path sections and how to compute them. For that, I will quickly introduce a section. So again, we have um, a subset of your base space, which we call U, and a section is basically just a mapping from you into your total space, such that when you apply the projection onto the section, you get uh, an identity mapping. And an example of that is shown here in this picture. So 
uh, imagine that we have a path on your base space, uh, which is shown here in white. Um, then the gray part on your torus is the path restriction and the path section is then just a path which goes along the path restriction. Such that when you apply the projection onto this path, you would get back your original path on your base space. And how you can exploit that is actually that you can um, develop very efficient algorithms uh, which take a path uh, from your base space as input and which tries to find um, path sections, namely paths which um, belong to the path restriction. And this can be really done in different ways. And we have two main algorithms implemented. One is um, something which we call sidestepping and the other one is called section patterns. And section patterns is really uh, our most advanced algorithm so far, which has also been uh, published in transactional robotics. And now we can put everything together into one concise algorithm, which we call the bundle planner. As input, the bundle planner becomes um, an initial state, a goal state, and a set of state spaces. We then uh, iterate through all the state spaces. We try to find uh, a path on each of them. And once we have found a path, we um, continue to the next uh, state space. And the idea here is that basically on the right, you can see again the torus. Um, what we would do is that we would first only start planning on the lower dimensional base space until we find a solution. Once we have found a solution, we would go to the original space. Uh, we would use the graph restriction or the path restriction to do restriction sampling. And we would stop the algorithm once we have found actually a solution on, your, on the original state space. And um, to make this actually probabilistically complete, you need to make sure that you uh, never stop sampling on all of those spaces. So we have basically, um, an importance function which tells us on which state space we should sample next. And this importance function is based on the sample density which we have right now. And we can now use this um, template algorithm basically to actually uh, generalize many of the existing motion planning algorithms. And we have applied that to three different algorithms so far. First, we have developed the quotient space roadmap planner or QMP. Um, and QMP star, and those algorithms basically um, generalize the probabilistic roadmap planner and the probabilistic roadmap planner star uh, by using edge restriction sampling. Uh, we have also generalized RT to QRT and QRT star. And finally, uh, very recently, we have also uh, generalized the sparse uh, roadmap planner. Um, to something which we call the sparse multi-level roadmap planner or SMLR. And now let me show you some evaluation results um, to which we have actually applied our multi-level motion planning framework. The first scenario is uh, a bug trap example where we have a cylindrical robot which has to uh, escape a small bug trap, a very narrow passage in the environment. And uh, we solve that by first abstracting this robot as a small sphere. We then first plan a motion for the sphere, and then we use this information to actually plan a motion for the complete robot. And you can see here um, that we were able to, to solve this problem and um, our algorithm QMP, for example, solves this problem in less than one second. And SMLR, our sparse multilevel roadmap planner, uh, can also solve this problem in less than five seconds. And the second scenario is a uh, computer animation where we have a small Kraken robot, which has to wrap its arms around a ship. Uh, this is a very challenging motion planning problem because it has 54 degrees of freedom. And our algorithm QMP can actually solve this problem in less than one second by abstracting um, parts of the arms away in each uh, level. Um, the third a scenario is a multi-robot navigation problem where we have eight robots which have to interchange their positions. This is also very challenging because um, there are 72 degrees of freedom involved and our algorithm can actually solve this problem in less than four seconds.
And finally, we have applied this whole uh, multi-level motion planning framework to uh, computing pre-grasp. And you can see here that we first compute grasp for different objects by first computing a, a motion for a relaxed model. And once we have that, we use that information to compute actually the motion for the whole hand. And you can see here, we can grasp actually um, many different obstacle geometries. And with that, uh, let me summarize this talk. Um, so I talked about fiber bundles really as a language of multi-level abstractions. Um, I talked about that fiber bundles tie together concepts from projections, from quotes in spaces, from constraint relaxations, and also from admissible heuristics. Um, I have shown you that we can generalize algorithms like RT, PRM, or sparse to fiber bundles. And all those algorithms can be proven to be probabilistically complete and asymptotically near optimal or optimal. And of course, everything is open source and publicly available in the open motion planning library. And this talk uh, is based on uh, those recent publications from us. Uh, and I would also like to thank all uh, our collaborators like Zohaib, Akbar, Mark Toussaint, Adrian Escant, and uh, Eiji uh, Yoshida. And with that, uh, I'd like to thank you again for your attention. Uh, thank you. And now it is my pleasure to introduce our next speaker, Georgios Avenedidis. Georgios is currently a postdoctoral researcher at the Max Planck Institute, where he works with Bernhard Schulkopf. Uh, before joining the Max Planck Institute, Georgios did a bachelor's degree at the University of Thessaloniki, a master's degree at the Saarland University in Germany, and he did a PhD at the Technical University of Denmark, where he worked on learning metrics on lower dimensional manifolds. I'm therefore really looking forward to his talk. Here he is, Georgios Avenedidis. <laughs> 